Greetings! I'm Carla Iverson, and I'm your Mariner Media Specialist. And today, we're going to talk about why do we still need libraries when everything is on the internet? So since I've come to High School North two years, everybody's been so sweet. They've been saying, Carla, I still like reading books. I do too, and I read them on my tablet. So the first thing I want to talk about is that this conversation that somehow this is books versus the internet is a false one. We as a society have already gone from cuneiform tablets to papyrus scrolls to the illuminated manuscript to printed books as we know. So what's the critical difference in that? All of the earlier formats from the cuneiform tablets to the printed books were very expensive to publish. So content would be vetted by publishers before publication, hopefully for accuracy, at least for popularity. This is a game changer, especially when we get to the mid 2000s with Web 2.0, because it is very cheap to publish information on the internet and nobody is taking a look to determine whether or not that content is accurate. So doesn't Google sort it out? Well, hmm, does Google sort it out? The thing about Google is you don't know Google is wrong without prior knowledge to know that Google is wrong. So that Hawaiian gentleman there did a lovely version of Over the Rainbow, didn't write it. And P.S., the lyrics in this Google card, they're not right either. So where does that leave us with our students? As our students, there's my grandbabies, our digital citizens, our being born into our digital world. I think a useful framework for us to view this through is to recognize that there's a difference between digital literacy and information literacy. Digital literacy, being able to utilize cell phones, computers very rapidly, is very different from being able to assess the quality of that information, organize it, and draw original conclusions. So yes, I have students help me with device issues, but I don't automatically assume that they're just a website. For example, oh, hold on. Ah, there we go. Backspace. Backspace. There we go. For example, a student had done this search for Nazis, prejudice, racism, diversity, tolerance, and came up with the Scientology website on how the Church of Scientology is being discriminated against in Germany. That very well may be true, but I don't know that that article was the most relevant article for her research for class. So the good news is there's still authoritative content out there. It's just locked behind paywalls, but woohoo, good news. Libraries get you through those paywalls. See, a library isn't just shelves and books. It is a curated repository of information, be it physical or virtual. Take a look at all the goodies that we get through the Ocean County Library. Rosetta Stone, you could be paying a lot of money for that on your own, or you could use your library card and go in through the website. Same with the Chilton Auto Repair Manuals or watching videos through Hoopla. We also have subscription resources for research. And take a look. We've got instructional screencasts so you can learn how to use our resources. Although in all fairness, since I used a music example in the beginning, um, while we cover health, history, science, literature, and current events, you will need to go to the library downtown to find accurate song lyrics because that is locked behind a very expensive paywall, those copyrighted creative works. So I would like for you to continue this model. So we've got digital literacy is not the same thing as information literacy. Google is still awesome. I say, but please think of it as the vending machine of information. Databases are online subscription resources, take more time to search, but they are academically more nutritious for our students' brains. So put me in, ask me to teach a class. I could be teaching a lesson to your students. I could be teaching a lesson to you and even computer stuff you're not afraid to ask about. I'm not gonna tell anybody, just come to me. Come to me on your prep period after school and we'll try to sort it out. Okay, what else do you need to know? Students need passes to be here during school, right? From study hall, they'll come directly. They should eat lunch first though, because they have to stay here and they can't eat in here. And students from classes still need passes. 
please only write passes for students that you teach or students who are in organizations that you sponsor now if you're advising. Okay, here's an example of a good pass and a bad pass. Please make sure the kids fill them out before you sign them. And let's say you're on study hall or lunch duty and the kid is begging and has a really good reason, but they don't have a pass. Do you teach that student? If not, all right, let them beg me. Let them beg me. Frequent flyers, I'll write the pass myself. So thank you in advance for keeping this space conducive to learning.